Yes. Uh, which is which is a term usually reserved for video games. Um, in movies, it's usually zombie movies. I mean, the classic survival horror movie is probably something like Night of the Living Dead. Uh, I can't remember anything before that where it was people trying to work together. Or in that case, in that movie, they don't work together. No, and that's they why not. they all end up dying. Well, yeah, I mean, that happens yeah. in most survival horror films. There's, there's normally somebody at odds with the rest of the group who is then not around when it comes to the right. climax. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you seen Train Train to Busan? I have. I haven't seen the sequel, but I really, I, I really enjoyed that first one. That is a great movie. And that, just when you thought zombie movies were dead, they made Train to Busan. And uh, man, oh! But don't bother with the sequel or the prequel or whatever. It okay. Is. I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued, and it's like it's on Netflix. I just haven't. Yeah. Like, there is a prequel that's animated, and there's a sequel that. Uh, did not satisfy. It could have been anyway. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and this is a great example of survivor horror. Who will, who will, who will survive and who will be eaten by the sharks? Everyone you expect to get eaten will get out. eaten by the sharks. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the only, you know, I think that Naomi, I think I've said this before, but she could have been a good victim. Like yep. I would feel sad if she died. I thought the cop um, might have gone as well. Yeah, he was another one. I mean, he's he, injured he even had a, Yeah, he's bleeding out. He's like, okay, this guy's going to die. And he, he even says, you know, I'll swim to the get the meat hook. I'm like, okay, then he's going to die. Oh, wait, no, never mind. No, um, yeah. And he yeah. could have died like, well, maybe this wouldn't be appropriate. Not appropriate, but this might be seem a little saving his daughter, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. Or like, uh, well, I mean, she could have died. She's a, she's a, a thief at the start of the film. Uh, yeah. Which, she might like that could have been that could have been penance and i forgot that she was what's his name's girlfriend ryan yeah uh, yeah uh so i felt sorry for ryan because he's down there in the basement with the, with the arsehole couple and he's like doing so much to try and save them and they're doing so little to help where I they're, know, they're just, they're just right? standing in the car like help us help us he's like he's trying but he's stuck on this little island full of dead bodies and like he's, he's just telling them like, just just calm down and be still and i'll go and sever an arm from a corpse of somebody I might know <laughs> to attract them. They go, oh, go hurry it up, will you? Stand still. Like, just so happy that Kyle died. Like I said, white entitlement. Um, yeah, and uh, he and Kyle knew each other. Did yes. you notice that? Like maybe yeah, they went yeah, to school together so, yeah. and Kyle was like a bully. Uh, yeah, he, he calls Ryan Freak Boy. Yeah. Which, yeah. Anyway, but, so, uh, so Bates is like Deep Blue Z in, in this, these many ways. There is one well-known person, one person in the cast who is more well-known than everybody else, which is Judah McMahon as opposed to Samuel L. Jackson. The CGI sharks have not aged well. The name of the of the supermarket is Oceania, which gave me Aquatica vibes. It was just like, it's water adjacent. Didn't spend a lot of time focus, think, thinking about it, I think. The main setting is a workplace that is destroyed, trapping them inside. <laughs> uh, there are initially two locations on different levels, uh, post-crash. Uh, uh, with like a storyline happening in each one when they converge later. The scene where Ryan has to break the window of his van to escape reminded me of Preach having to break out of his oven, uh, which mm. was a pretty good scene actually. He, he has to like gear up the courage and smash the window, and then the water pours in. And he's got to swim out. I, I enjoyed that. When the security guard dies, he like rises out of the water in the same way that Janice does in the elevator shaft, and neither of them survives that. Uh, with the shark ramming into the car window. Reminded me of the sharks ramming into the window to break the big glass window in, in DBC. I was disappointed. Wow. Ryan, Ryan gets fired and he never gets to see his manager again because hoping that he would quote Scoggins with a, I don't work for you no more line. We didn't get that. <laughs> I was hoping that would happen. <laughs> and you go swim with your little fishes. Anyway, uh, there's a spurting electrical wire, which happens in DBC. When Tina's new boyfriend, Steve, Stephen, when he, Stephen dies, he like goes to turn off something to, and then dies underwater to save an out, which is exactly how Scoggins dies. He like swims down to save to turn something off, turn something on, dies. Uh, when they're climbing the shelves, it reminded me of Preacher climbing his shelves in the kitchen, but they don't fall over. Jesus. Uh, some of these are tenuous, but I, I, you know, this is how every time I watch any film, it's like, oh, how is this like deep it? Do Ryan cuts off a dead guy's hand? Jim loses a hand. When Kyle is killed, he has a disembodied leg, but it doesn't twitch like Scoggins' leg, which is disappointing. Uh, a severed leg should always twitch is uh -huh, the, mo the sure. motto of Deep Sea the podcast 
<laughs> they kill a shark with they electrocute a shark. Heaven the DBC. There is additional writing done on bait, which is done by a guy called Duncan Kennedy. Duncan Kennedy, better known as the screenwriter of DBC. So really, yeah, oh. they have, they have, uh, it's, it's written by by Duncan Kennedy. So good for him. Uh, the big floodable set. All of the most of the set is on a soundstage, and it's a set they can actually flood. Uh, which I, I really enjoy when that happens. And same in DBC. Uh, end credit song sung by somebody involved in the film. Hello, Cool J. And the director, Hickam Randall. And the final shot. The final shot of bait. The shark eating a bird. Which Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. Jumps out of the water, oh, takes a jump out of a terrible. seagull. Looks awful. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, so that's how uh, bait is like DBC. But we have one last thing to do, which is... How deep and how blue do you think bait is, Sean? Do you think it's deeper and or bluer than deep blue sea? If I were to tell you that on average deep blue sea is 47.5 feet deep and 31% blue, do you reckon the overall bait is deeper or bluer? A question I'm sure you uh, thought you'd be asked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, no, this this movie is not blue at all. Uh, there is nothing blue um, about these uh, waters. Uh, these are our murky, you know, supermarket flooded waters. Uh, so there's nothing blue about it. It's like 2% blue. It's mostly green. It, it should be like shallow green. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, how, I, it's these waters are like, you know what? When you think about it, they're only like five feet. And when we see the shots of the shark, you'd think it was like 20 feet because the shark is huge. But these supermarket shelves, I mean, they have to be high enough for, you know, everybody but little old ladies to grab stuff off the top. And it's not that deep at all. So I'm going to say this is a shallow green movie and not just green, like, you know, the movie Saw, like a really murky gray green kind of like Matrix. The, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, but a little bit less uh, neon. Yeah, well, green like the Matrix. I I went through and worked out how deep and blue it is because that's how I spend my Sundays. Uh, so this is on average, it is about five and a half feet deep. Because uh, you're, you're mm-hmm. right, they are they they are like down one level in the supermarket and down one more level or story in in the uh, the car park. So not very deep, and they're mostly on top of... Most of it takes place like at ground level, because they're on top of the shelves, as you say. And then it's about 18% blue, because there's a lot... It's very blue okay. in the opening sequence, because they're like out on yeah. the ocean, out, out in the open air. And But actually, in the supermarket, all the uniforms are blue. There's a lot of blue stuff on the walls. Uh, there are quite there are a lot of shots that are completely underwater, and those they, it is very blue. But it's, it's still... It's like half as blue as Deep Blue Sea. I'm so not no going to say blue. 18 I'm going to have to disagree with you there because I don't think you should count the beginning before the tsunami because that's the, not the, the film. movie. I'm doing the film. Oh, okay, fine. It's in the film, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I've sat down and worked out how blue <laughs> Cliffhanger is. And so like, I have a graph for these things, John. Don't argue with the maths. <laughs> <laughs> I have spreadsheets to back this up. I know, I know. Uh, or do you have anything to plug, Sean? Where can the listeners find you? Uh, you can find me, uh, if you go to whatever your favorite podcast, uh, provider, wherever you find good podcasts, look for me for, uh, we watch on Netflix is actually still out there, even though I kind of canceled it, uh, on Libsyn, but you can still find it. Um, you can, uh, if you like Columbo, go listen to the Columbo confab. That is really popular apparently. And uh, you can listen to the Best Picture podcast with me and my friend Eric or the Thousand One Movies podcast with me and Eric. Uh, the last episodes that we did of that were uh, we were covering 1975 in the Best Picture podcast. And uh, I, uh, coincidentally, the last, the last movie we talked about was Jaws. Um, we're going to do Nashville, which will probably drop tomorrow mm-hmm. as we record this. Um, the Thousand One Movies podcast. We did Metropolis. Uh, can't, what did we do? Uh, nobody cares. Okay. <laughs> but uh, also, if you like Murder, She Wrote, uh, there's only one podcast that features two middle-aged drunk men talking about Murder, She Wrote, and that's the Cabot Cove Confab. So check that out. Very nice. 
And that uh, the first podcast you mentioned is, F- I'll have to bleep the first name, but is S-H apostrophe T. Oh, are you going to beep out the swearing? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's fine. You've, you've done okay. far less than many other guests. Don't you worry. Okay. <laughs> uh, Robert Zerby, I'm talking about you. Uh, so, uh, listen, you can find more of my writing over at life versus film.com, life vs film. And you can follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at deep blue C pod or email us deep blue C pod at gmail.com. Regular co host Mark, you can find more of his stuff over at movies, films, and flicks.com. And I'm sure he'd want me to point out that the very first shot of the film is a jet ski being pulled into frame. Uh, he loves his jet skis, they are only in the opening. Like the opening scene of the film, but they are in there. So jet skis in this film make an appearance. Good, uh, and I make a monthly appearance over on the Lambcast, hosting the Lampity movie trivia show, which Sean has been on recently, and is always a fun time. It's based on Japanese it's all movie trivia. Check it out; it's good. So thank you once again, Sean, for joining me this week. Certainly, my pleasure. It was uh, it's eleven o'clock on a Sunday for me, and uh, usually. Uh, that's not a good time for me, but this turned out uh, better than I uh, expected. Excellent, glad to hear. Uh, next week, we're we're putting the trigger on one of the bigger guns of my unseen shot movies. It's Jaws Two. We're starting off what should be a trilogy of of episodes, hopefully not fully scheduled yet, of looking at the Jaws sequels, one film at a time. So come back next week for Jaws Two. Uh, but as for today's show, I've been Jake Lewitt, and we'll deep blue see you next week. Bye.